For more than 40 years, CNN has offered a front row seat to history in the making. Why am I under arrest? Sir? It's a hoax, a setup. Join us Donald as we Trump turn back win. the clock. Two explosions. Killed Osama bin Laden. And watch the stories that have defined our time. There are no words. OJ Simpson. Yeah. 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 This is CNN's Rewind. It was spring 1989. An English programmer came up with the idea for a World Wide Web. Plans to open the first McDonald's in Moscow were underway. And change was on the horizon. Anti-communist sentiment was growing in the Eastern Bloc. Nationalist tensions are spilling over. And in China, young people took to the streets to call for reform but were met with a force beyond imagination. I walked into a revolution. Fifteen years ago, China was still almost totally isolated from the rest of the world. Today, the encouragement of private enterprise, free markets, foreign investment, the introduction of Western products and ideas has made this country the pioneer in the communist world's search for reform. But now, China's reform program has run into trouble. Inflation officially has been at the 20% level in recent months. Corruption has grown a great deal. These dislocations caused by an economy that is only half reformed, neither communist nor capitalist, have generated widespread public discontent. In the dead of night, 2,000 students marched through the streets of Beijing, calling for democracy, human rights, and the resignation of the Chinese government. Their destination, Tiananmen Square in the city center. It was here that the students placed a huge banner honoring the memory of Hu Yaobang, who died on Saturday in political disgrace, purged by Communist Party hardliners two and a half years ago for his liberal views. To the students, however, Hu represented hope for reform and change, hopes that to many Chinese have been dashed by recent government efforts to scale back economic and political liberalization. There has never been a challenge to the leadership of communist China like this one. In cities all across the country, crowds taking to the streets to demand democracy and freedom. In commemorating Hu's death by demanding the implementation of the progressive policies he advocated, the students have put the government on the defensive, most notably by using tactics such as the peaceful sit-in that the authorities here have never seen. The students got a big boost when several official Chinese newspapers defied government orders and published accurate accounts of the events of the past week. If you're going to have a student movement, you must seek support from the workers and peasants. Only if they understand can we succeed. Again and again, the badly outnumbered police were overwhelmed and pushed aside. This was the demonstrators' destination, Tiananmen Square, the heart of Beijing, the seat of the government. The scene at Tiananmen showed the depth of public discontent here now over inflation, corruption, and the lack of political freedom. On the eve of Mikhail Gorbachev's visit, China's rebellious students upped the stakes in their confrontation with the government, adopting a new set of tactics to force a faster pace of reform. 
200 students started a hunger strike, marching through Beijing to downtown Tiananmen Square, vowing to stay without food until the authorities agreed to recognize their illegal students' federation. With Mikhail Gorbachev, the Soviet Union's pioneer of political reform due here on Monday, no one in the Chinese leadership wants him to have a reception like this. This is now the third day in which about a thousand students have been carrying out a hunger strike to press their demands for democracy. Gorbachev's reforms have been extremely successful, so we hope his visit will help accelerate political reform in China. A growing number of those in the square are not students, but journalists, professional people, and especially workers impatient for change. For China's leaders, there could not be a more embarrassing or frightening set of circumstances. Now some thoughts. I came to cover a summit. I walked into a revolution. A massively peaceful statement by the people, but still a revolution. Huge crowds again surge through the center of Beijing. People from all walks of life, workers, taxi drivers, shopkeepers, even some peasants from the countryside, all lending their support to the hunger strikers' demand for freedom and democracy. At the same time, over 100,000 people demonstrated in Shanghai, where 300 students had begun their own hunger strike. Communist Party Chief Zhao and Premier Li visiting Tiananmen Square to appeal for an end to the student hunger strike. Late in the evening, Premier Li appeared on nationwide television to announce that the situation was out of control and that the army was being called in to restore order. The situation in Beijing is getting worse. And it is going to bring out a nationwide riot. If we don't really do anything to, crack, to stop this situation, Communist Party Chief Zhao, a liberal who had sympathized with the students, he had been forced to resign. There is word authorities decided he had to go because he refused to agree to use force against the students. For a month, the government has taken very calm and tolerant attitude towards the students' demonstration. We did this because we love our students. Masses of demonstrators marched out of Beijing and rode in cars to the west. Before dawn, more than 100,000 were on the outskirts of the city, taking the confrontation to the troops, not waiting for the army to reach town. The People's Liberation Army, blocked by the people. The troops cannot move to clear Tiananmen Square. This is CNN's Prime News, and in Beijing, Bernard Shaw. Let's go quickly to Jeannie Mo's in Tiananmen Square. Jeannie? Bernie, um, we don't have any real hard information down here. The same announcement keeps coming over the PA system. It's an official announcement signed by the Premier of China, according to the announcer, and it talks about martial law being uh, being imposed. Here in Tiananmen Square, it was a night of tension, uh, uh, a Jeannie? daybreak of celebration, Jeannie? a morning of uncertainty. Yes, Bernie? I'm being told that the government officials are coming into the CNN control room now. This man with a piece of paper in his hand, I'm certain that is not a party invitation. Okay, let me quickly tell you what this official is saying. If you do not I tried obey to contact order, him. you will He's not be allowed to come He's in. He's at home. If this it's that important right to you, side of your screen he should call us to see you. If Don't you do not me. obey the order. Right here. 500 4100. You have him call us. You have him call us personally and explain to us what is happening here. If you cannot give us an explanation, moment, fine. We're told that President George Herbert Walker Bush is watching what's happening. President Bush is saying, quote, word of the news blackout is very disturbing. Our government let me to tell you, now stop your transmission. These characters being written on this legal pad, in effect, 
are saying that this government is telling CNN to end its transmission. Throughout the day, Army helicopters swooped low over the heart of Beijing. Some dropped leaflets warning that force would be used if the demonstrators didn't give up. The living is anything but easy, but the conditions have been eased somewhat, thanks to donations and volunteer services of civic organizations and ordinary citizens. I think people in Beijing is very, is very tight. Another need is being fulfilled too, money. China state-run television, CCTV, donated some $6,000 to the cause. I think I, I will never forget this gift. The official press stressed that the army was being deployed because Beijing had fallen into chaos. Earlier in the day, protesters again set up roadblocks and barricades to prevent the troops from moving in. In an effort to win the soldiers over to their cause, the demonstrators offered them food and drink and gave them newspapers with accurate accounts of the recent campaign for democracy. And there were growing indications these efforts were paying off, with persistent reports that many in the military were reluctant to use force against their own people, and that the senior leadership of the armed forces was divided over whether to follow the government's orders. The question on everyone's lips is, will the soldiers be ordered in again in larger numbers, or will the authorities seek an alternative way out of this unprecedented crisis? carriers and troop trucks came rumbling down Chang'an Boulevard towards Tiananmen Square. and they are now burning a bus at an intersection near Tiananmen Square in a gesture of defiance. Government loudspeakers told the students that they must all leave the area or they could not guarantee the safety or lives of anyone left in Tiananmen. We have had reports that there were some students left in center of the square, but the impression we had is that however defiant their attitude may be, they're essentially prisoners. They're simply there awaiting their fate. The students were, were incredibly brave. Um, they were fighting live ammunition with rocks and stones, and at one point even tried to block uh, an advancing column of about 30 armored troop carriers with a public bus. Um, we could see the people inside the bus being taken off and beaten. The crackdown is going to take many more hours, uh, if not days, before it is complete, uh, before we will know how many people have died. How do you feel right now? 
feel right now, I'm very angry. In the square itself, uh, the troops do appear to be in complete control. They gain that control at a considerable cost in human life. People were being shot at random all over the place all night long. As soldiers terrorize the tense and chaotic capital with random shooting of unarmed civilians on Monday, reports of a split in the military leadership grew more persistent. There are no words. Made history. The United States killed Osama bin Laden. Two explosions. Donald Trump wins. It's a hoax. It's set up. Why am I under arrest? 